Hey, welcome back to our pipe fitting series here at Western Welding Academy. If you don't already know, I'm James Packard. A uh, little bit of advice. If you ever roll up on a rig welder leaning on the back of his truck, chances are he's not taking a break. I think he's doing some pipe fitting. Let's continue with our series, shall we? we're going to have the ISO with the dimensions on it and we're going to do all our takeouts. This is kind of the next step in your pipe fitting adventure. So we got our ISO here. The overall length center of 90 to base of flange is 20 and three quarters of an inch. What I like to do is get me another sheet of ISO paper, draw that same picture on there and I'll end up getting my cut links. And I also like to have a notebook, a notepad here. I write down all my dimensions so if I have to look back and double check things I can do that. Uh, minimum tools, notepad, ISO paper, construction calculator, and your trusty old blue book. Pencil. Uh, that should that should about do you a straight edge for your ISOs. So what we ended up doing here is writing out our north run, 20 and three quarters. That's what our ISO. That's what our dimension is on the ISO. And I always write down what my uh, 90 degree takeouts are. So a two inch 90, long radius takeout is three inches generally one and a half times uh, and that comes right out of the blue book there and I'll write down a page number sometimes if I need to reference it more than once uh, two inch raised face weld neck flange 600 pound takeout on that is two and seven eighths uh, in the blue book if you look at note I think number three I'll go to page 105 and I'll show you where this can get a little tricky so page 105 link through Hub Y, that was note number two. That includes the 16th of an inch raised face and 150 pound, 300 pound standards. Uh, does not include the quarter inch raised face for 400 and heavier. So we have to add that quarter inch to the two and seven eighths. So your flange takeout's gonna be two and seven eighths plus a quarter inch, and that equals three and an eighth. So that'll be what you subtract from that overall length when we get there. Uh, subtract your 16th of an inch for your weld gap. Sometimes you can just slam it up, cut your land on there, and that'll give you your gear gap. Uh, so we have your overall length minus your flange, 20 and 3 quarters, minus 3 and an eighth. That gives us 17 and 5 eighths. Minus your 90 degree, your 2 inch 90 degree, which was 3 inches takeout. So 17 and 5 eighths minus 3 inches, that equals 14 and 5 eighths. Uh, minus your weld gap, 14 and 5 eighths minus the 16th makes it 14 and 9 16 so your actual cut length this is what you're going to need to cut your pipe out as will be 14 and 9 16 that's from your weld to your to your weld right there and there i guess that's where our cutout is and then of course them two 90s back to back 90s kind of set themselves that's uh six inches uh that'll be a six inch distance on there so all you really got to worry about is that 16th of an inch gap, which you can take out of your land. Okay, when we talk about a takeout or a takeoff, basically we're taking this number, 20 and three quarters, and we got to shorten that down to what our actual pipe length is. So our takeoffs or takeout, take off that flange, take off the dimension for that 90, and that leaves you with what that pipe is. Oh, welcome back. <laughs> Oh, welcome back. It's you. I wasn't expecting you. I was just breaking down some math from the previous fitting video. Let's dive into it. The first thing I want to touch on when you get an ISO, the original ISO, this is the one either your fitter gave you or the company gives you or whoever. This one is the Bible. This one does never change. You don't get a new ISO from your engineering department. You always take this in and get a copy of it or you take it to your fitter and have him update it because that's the guy uh, if it's not you, that's the guy that's pulling dimensions out in the field and those dimensions are changing on here. And what can happen is if you take the original and throw it out, go get a new one from the engineering department, 
all the measurements you had on here are no longer there and your cut lengths are going to end up wrong. So you write down fitter original or whosoever original ISO this is and this stays with you. Then you take another piece of ISO paper and you draw your own ISO, one you can mark up and you can draw your cut lengths on and, and uh, things like that. Uh, also got a notepad for writing down any information you need to write down that you need to look back on. So anytime you write down a, a takeoff, a takeoff being a, a dimension you have to add or subtract uh, from a fitting, you write that down on your notepad where it goes, what type of fitting it is, any additional dimensions that go on that fitting. We're going to start with 20 and 3 quarters of an inch. and We need to find a piece of pipe that will go between them two fittings and, and make that dimension. You take a 2 inch 90 degree long radius elbow, the takeout of that is 3 inches and you find that in this blue book right here. Page 95, we go to 2 inch and we're looking for dimension through A, 90 degree long radius uh, weld L, and we look for A, 3 inches or 1 and a half times the diameter. So half a 2 inch is 1, 1 plus 2 equals 3. Uh, then we need to take the uh, take out of that two inch raised face weld neck flange, 600 pound. And if you notice on page uh, 105, I write all this down so I know how to find it real quick. 600 pound uh, take out. You look through dimension Y. Note number two states that 150 pound and 300 pound flanges uh, includes a 16th inch raised face. Uh, but uh, on anything bigger than 400 pound flanges, there's a quarter inch raised face, face that's not included in that. So we have to add that to everything. You gotta watch them little notes in here because it'll, it'll mess up your dimension by 3 sixteenths of an inch. So the takeout of a two inch raised face weld neck flange, 600 pound, two and seven eighths plus one quarter. And I get that right here. Two inch, 600 pound, through Y, two and seven eighths plus that quarter inch, that gives you three and an eighth. So we take that three and an eighth and we start subtracting that from that 20 and three quarters. Uh, we've also got to figure in our weld gap, 16th of an inch is a, a, good, a good baseline. So we start with our 20 and three quarters minus three and an eighth of an inch, which is our raised face weld neck flange, that gives us 17 and five eighths of an inch. So we know from center 90 to the weld, behind that flange is 17 and 5 eighths of an inch. Now we subtract our 90 degree elbow. So it's 17 and 5 eighths minus three inches. That equals 14 and 5 eighths. So we know now that piece of pipe is 14 and 5 eighths weld to weld. But we've still got to take out our weld gap, uh, which is generally a 16th of an inch. Sometimes you can get that 14 and 5 eighths and just when you grind your land on that piece of pipe on either end, that'll take a sixteenth out of it. Uh, I like to put mine in there just to be a little bit more exact. So we'll we'll take fourteen and five eighths minus the sixteenth. That runs us down to that fourteen and nine sixteenths. And if you look on my ISO that I drew, I had already done this to streamline it a little bit. My cut length is fourteen and nine sixteenths. And so we cut that piece of pipe fourteen and nine sixteenths, put our bevel on it, put a land on it, and weld it together. And we should end up when we double check it. 20 and 3 quarters of an inch. If that was helpful, like, subscribe, share with your friends, check out our links below. I'll see you on part three. Hey!